All right, so it says that a flywheel, oh, they are giving us the rotational inertia, thank you. That saves us a lot of time. <laughs> Starting from rest acquires an angular velocity, okay, so let me just label this omega, while subject to a constant torque from a motor for about uh, some duration of time, delta t. Okay, I hope that's useful for some reason. It's asking, what is the angular acceleration of the flywheel? Hmm. I think looking at it, the quickest way to answer that would be to use the kinematical relationship. So you know from translational kinematics that acceleration is defined as the time derivative of the velocity. Um, or if you are given a quantity like this and you are uh, looking for average acceleration, then average acceleration would be change of velocity for some change of duration. And uh, I've talked about rotational analogies before. And what analogy means is you can take expressions like this and translate it, analogize it to um, expression that would be applicable in a rotational case for a similar scenario. So you are looking for angular acceleration, the rotational analog of acceleration, <laughs> and the rotational analog of velocity is angular velocity. So angular acceleration is the time derivative of angular velocity. Or if you are looking at average angular acceleration or um, uh, one associated with the constant uh, angular acceleration, then simply the change of angular velocity per uh, duration of time. So, so this will give me a number here. Let me um, just do a reminder to put that in. I think I have all the information in the question for change in angular velocity and the duration of time. Good. And then it's asking for the magnitude of the torque. Uh, imagine they asked um, the linear analog of torque, which would be force. If they asked about force, the very first thing your mind should go to is acceleration. If you somehow know acceleration, then you can get to force through the Newton's second law. Net force is equal to mass times acceleration, or we usually write it the other way around. So this analogy holds for um, the, the, so, um, the analogy that we are using before continues to work when you are dealing with a dynamical situation. So the rotational analogy of this is that that rotational version of force, which would be torque, is equal to the rotational version of mass, which would be rotational inertia, times the rotational version of acceleration, which would be angular acceleration. So looking at this, if we have angular acceleration from A, we have rotational inertia, so we should be able to calculate torque just like that. So, so yeah, it's a uh, um, relatively simple. You could also, you know, look up the definitions and whatnot. But I want you to point out use of these uh, uh, analogies, which will really uh, minimize the amount of formulas you have to memorize. So uh, angular, uh, so let me say alpha angular acceleration is change of angular velocity, 200 radians per second, because it's starting from rest. It's going up to that value divided by five seconds. Oh, I could have done that in my head. But... Um, okay, um, that's, uh, uh, oh, yeah, I gotta print that. Um, okay, 40 uh, radians per second squared, that sounds right. Um, so, given that angular acceleration, the torque would be the rotation inertia, 45. I'm just double checking it's all basic SI units. Kind of trusting that, you know, if I plug in every, all the numbers in basic SI units, the answer I get will be in basic SI unit. So 40 and then 1800.